So finally, I have more or less finished the rebuild of my CNC. It's a Bultmann 1010. And I also did rebuild uh, the whole uh, electronics. And I didn't move to Mac. Um, the reason was, matter of fact, that uh, uh, a subscriber saw in one of my videos where I have made this Mac temp template that the license I have achieved when I bought my breakout board not was valid. So I was rethinking again <laughs> for I don't know how many times. And um, I invested and bought the black box from Open Build. And man, I can tell you, I'm very happy with it. It's extremely reliable. It was not like the X Pro 5 who disconnected and not could connect and not could connect. I really struggled with that box. This one connects just as it is. I also made a post-process file for Carbco Maker, which I use for designing my stuff. And uh, before we, we see it in praxis, let's go and take a look on the post-process file because if you want to use it there will be a download uh, a download link here below you will have to modify some of the settings for for your machine so let's go to the computer the whole uh, process is based of course on on my ecosystem on my setup but uh, uh, you we will take a look here how uh, this is uh, put together so when i start with uh, with a project i have all my tool pad is uh, I have the material thickness here and I measure or set everything up for the bottom because this process here means that you need to have a fixed probe so and I always have my center of origin here at at the center uh, of the material so, uh, just to look on some of the tool pads and how I set them up. And uh, here you see, I give them a name and I have my own structure. You can use whatever you want. That is a name that will be, be shown in, in, the, in the file when it's converted to a G-code. But I said T32, which is my tool number. It's an end mill, it's a three millimeter. And that's what I use from when I find my tool here in in my uh, tool library, everything is stored here, and then I get this information later on when I go out in my garage. Um, so when I then compress this file, you see here now you have uh, the T30 and the T32. They need to be in one file, and uh, when this is done, I will uh, make this uh, take, call it take free file. And I choose the black box, in my case it's millimeter. I will make one for inches as well. And here I mentioned what M codes do I use here. I have the M, M, uh, O, it's for the pores, it's M3 for the um, uh, spindle, and the M8 for, in my case, uh, compressed air. And this will create a workflow. So when this is done, we will have, I just need to, to find, here it is. So the, uh, the, the post-process file is uh, making this file here. As you can see, it comes up with some information. It tells me the first tool is a three millimeter it tells me it's a millimeter mode, absolute distance, and so on and so on. But down here, you can see start tool chains and probing. And that's because we want to check and be very, very sure that everything uh, is correct. So it starts to go to my tool chains position. As you see here, it is operating in the G53. And it's very important that your home your CNC machine every time you start up or every time you have had it uh, break down uh, or, or stopped by, by emergency switch. 
In my case, I move this in my G53 coordinate system to these positions here, and these X and Y, and also the set here, you need to modify so it fits into your machine. Then it tells me, and that you do in a post-process file. And then it tells me that I need to change my tool uh, T32, three millimeter die, it's a slot drill. Then I press resume and it moves over and start to probe at this position here, again in G53. Then I move to G54, which is uh, the work uh, coordinate and not the machine coordinates. And I do the probing, G38.2, uh, and I have set it to minus 70. That's enough in my case, I guess. Um, and, uh, and 200 millimeters per minute. And here I probe the set axis. You will have to modify these set values so it again fits to your machine in the post-process file. I have made comments in the post-process file. Uh, then it goes, then it takes the G92, and this means they do the offset. And in, this is also what you need to modify. This is the distance from when the probe reacts and down to, down to my spoiler board. And that's why I always produce from the bottom of the spoiler board and up. And in my case, it's 47.5 millimeters. Then it goes back to G53 again, and it moves maximum up. That's in my case, minus five. Then I do uh, back, go back to the G54 coordinate system, and uh, I don't know why I do that there. <laughs> but I go and then switch back to G53, and uh, it will go a little bit down and then it goes back to the process where we can put on the dust uh, for the uh, dust remover and then it runs the file it checks the height the spindle turns on suction on and so on and so on and it goes back and it do its job and then when this is done and i need to change the tool the whole thing moves here directly back to the position for the tool change. Then it comes with the M0 for pause, and it tells me which tool I need to use. The whole process go over again. It probes uh, the, the G38.2, and then it moves back and can put my dust remover on, and put res resume, and it continues the last uh, stay of the work. At the end of the file, uh, there is no tool change, but I raise my set axis to the maximum after the spindle is turned off, after the suction is turned off, and then it moves totally back to the right. So I have uh, uh, good working conditions when I need to change the, the item, and if I have several I need to process, then I just need to push uh, the start button again, and the whole process goes over again. And that's how it works. So let's go out and try this out in praxis. So I have prepared the machine and we will play now that we just started it up and uh, therefore I need to home the whole uh, machine. And that we will do quite fast. And here I cannot use my macros because I'm not sure if my G53 is correct. So that's why I use, of course, this manually. And we are ready to do the homing of the machine. So let's do that. So now the machine has homed and it knows exactly in the G53 coordinate system where it is. 
Well, I don't know where it is, is in the G54. So there, I need to uh, put out the zero on X and Y, not the Z. That will be done with the probe. So let's uh, find um, the right spot. There we go. And as I said to you in Kafka, I always use the center of the material. I don't use any of the corners. That's 99% of, of the cases. Yeah? So I have just made a cross and it does not need to be really that accurate either because I have enough, enough materials and all four sides. So it's good enough. And now I zero out my X and my Y. And you can see here now that the tool is exactly over the center of where we want to to uh, uh, do the uh, tooling. So next step is to load the G-code, which I have done. It is here. And uh, yeah, it, now it is just to turn on and uh, run our file. So uh, let's do that. Let's run it. And you see the set axis is going up now. And it's now going to the tool chains positioning. I do, this is the right tool I have in here. It is a three millimeter, so there's nothing to change. It will come in the, in the second round. <clears throat> and I resume the whole thing, because uh, let's play, we have changed it. And now it goes over and do the probing. It measures the length of the tool and that was the 42 point, or was it 47.5 millimeters, which is the offset uh, for this. It goes back now and then I can attach for my dust tube. Uh, I don't do that now, uh, but I turn on my tool and I will, I still not figure out how to let it start and stop on 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 um, m3 m5 but i will figure it out and i will let you know uh, it is not on uh, huan yang or whatever it's called uh, uh, bdf it's an h100 so uh, now i just uh, click resume and it moves in in full high again because i don't know uh, which type of um, of clamps as an example, they could be higher, so I do not want it to be only on the safety height. It will do the job, as you can see. And then it goes out. I have made it higher, so it not makes too much noise. And uh, I'm ready to change the tool, and that we will do now. Six millimeter slot drill. Enter into the machine. So now we click resume and we'll move over and it will probe uh, the new tool. And it goes down or moves down. So, and now we can attach the dust tube again. We don't want that, it's only a simulation. Because as a matter of fact, first time I do this. And turn on my spindle. 
and click resume and it moves in and now it makes a circle as you can see oh that was it and now it turns back because the job is done and um, this is done again in the G53 I stopped my spindle and it should have been stopped automatically I will still figure out how and now I can uh, change my to the next item and I would maybe have made a fence here so it, it was easier just to change it and uh, do the process and I can now start again and now it has to stop here because I need to move back to the three millimeter well you could say why do I not uh, do all plates uh, and then with the three millimeter and then change yeah of course you can do that but in some cases you maybe need it to be very accurate so every time you lose uh, your item and mount it again it, it can uh, make some difference in, in, in the measurement so um, now the hole will run one time again and uh, yeah that's it so far so uh, this is uh, how my workflow is it's uh, much easier for me to to change the call it hybrid tool change it's not totally automatic but it's uh, it's a bit on the way and if you have um, let's say four five six uh, different tools it is much easier and you have all the tools uh, here as well so uh, happy carving and uh, see you another day another time okay bye bye